part of my presentation and you'll understand why I want to deal with the first part of the presentation because you will mind and my presentation are very related. Then I'll move to my own presentation and then at the end I will give you basically three means of action that are going to support the European identity. Bien, quiero comenzar mi intervención. So by way of introduction, let me speak about Euromind. As you know, Euromind is a forum created by Teresa. It's a wonderful forum that tries to promote the relationships between science and politics in order to improve the 21st century societies. According to Sabueleta, according to experts, we could change the world if we stopped talking only to our colleagues. If we leave the um, decisions on the hands of those who are not experts and those who hide their ideas in dark means, well, we're going to be doing something irresponsible because we experts should leave our ivory tower and then speak about the lack of knowledge amongst those who take vital decisions in our lives. We should say what we know and not what wants to be heard. This is a moral premise. Let's move to what Alice Drecker said, an American writer, and she's one of my intellectual heroes. She said that um, we need to speak about the evidence that there is. Legislators are terrible when it comes to evidence. They don't understand that the scientific revolution made it possible for democracy to happen, the democracy that we enjoy in some countries in the world, at least for now. More than ever, democracies should support scientific research and citizens must demand for proof of what is being said, demand evidence instead of being um, just witnesses of decisions. Evidence has to come first and then social action. We need the freedom to think freely, to research, to investigate. That's vital for our democracies. If we forget this, we will destroy our society. Citizens must have access to reliable information. Dreger says that um, evidence is an ethical question, the most pressing in modern democracy. If we want social justice, we must seek for the truth. And we rarely notice that hell is paved with good intentions. Political decisions based on ideology only are dangerous. If we have experts that have been um, kidnapped, so to speak, by politicians, we will not be speaking about freedom. Different opinions must be promoted. Let's move to what Philo Sarathin said, an ex-minister in Germany. He said that the establishment is harassing ideologists. They define what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Basically, we're speaking about being politically correct, sadly famous. And Sarazin mentioned different elements. I'll just quote some of them so that you can understand to what extent Tilo Sarazin's message was important. Firstly, inequality is bad, equality is good. Secondly, wealthy people should feel guilty unless they're artists or sports people. Thirdly, different living conditions have nothing to do with what people decide but with circumstances. Fourthly, all cultures are equally valuable. It's important not to overvalue Christian or Western societies. If you don't agree with me, you're, ra you're a racist. And fifthly, Islam is a peaceful religion. And if you don't agree with me, you're as evil as anti-Semitic people. And then, industrialized societies are guilty for the terrible conditions of living in other countries. Saracen says that there should be some space for those who don't agree, for those who disagree, so they can send their messages without being afraid of being punished. Social, cultural and scientific development begin when a minority disagrees. Moviéndonos. If we move now to my presentation, we should wonder why is individual psychology important? From your mind, we say that um, 
inhuman values should not have a space in Europe. For example, religious traditions that go against individual rights should be excluded from our societies. And it is vital to understand the psychological structure of citizens. We need a scientific answer on that structure. So we help politicians when they take decisions that will have an influence on citizens, on all of us. I'd like to um, speak about Stepinka now, very significant character in your mind. His ideas are inspired on individual psychology, and I've been an expert on that field for the three last decades, and I'll mention some of his messages. Firstly, social reality only exists within a group of people. That social reality depends on the mental capacity of each of those people, of their ability to understand the questions that are a matter of public interest. Thirdly, culture would be the epidemiology of the mental representations of each citizen. Ideas and practices spread from one person to the next. Fifth, collective culture comes, after all, from individual psychology. This is what Pinker said, and I'm quoting his message. Sixth, culture should be linked to psychology. And seventh, psychology is supported by neuroscience because our minds are made up by neuronal networks and our thoughts and our feelings are tangled there. Mr. Pinker is basically repeating what science already knows beyond any doubt. And this fits perfectly well with the idea of individual psychology. Each person has a first identity integrated in the genes. Genes are different from one person to the next. And their genes, in their interaction with the environment, build a unique brain. The Cornectome research has established that. Each person is unique from the very beginning and later. Current neuroscience can identify the footprint of our brains. If we applied what the genome says using some of the elements of the environment, we will structure our unique identity supported in the connectoma. The minds of citizens are not blank pieces of paper, and that makes it more difficult for politicians to make decisions, but this is the way life is. Socialization mechanisms don't work the same in different people. So understanding these differences is crucial. Let's move to the second part of my presentation. I'll deal with individual psychology now. Although this was quite obvious, Charles Murray, one of my heroes, said that governments should make it possible for citizens to reach happiness. This might be a very abstract concept, but we could define this. Happiness as a long-standing feeling of satisfaction with one's own life. And that goal, Murray says, is not compatible with being, with trusting fully a society that is addressed to collective groups, because citizens must be treated as individuals. Individual psychology studies the similarities and differences between individuals. We can see a very solid result of research in this field. If we compare two groups of people, the differences within each group are much higher than um, the average difference between both groups. So if we choose two random German, if we randomly select two random people rather, the difference between them will be bigger than the difference between Germans as a group and Spaniards as a group. And by the way, Spaniards and Germans are citizens of the European Union. And according to the official definition, a citizen 
a citizen of the European Union is an individual with the nationality of one of the member states. In our continent, we are trying to achieve a federation of states. Some say that achieving that goal requires a feeling of membership. Unfortunately, I need to repeat this again. Those people are unique. Just like Ami Malouf said, my identity is what makes me different from any other person. And that identity is made by different elements that go beyond what we can find on official registers. Humankind is made up of individual people. Each person is different from anyone else. Ani Malouf, who received the award of the Asturias Prince in Spain, he deserved it, some other people didn't really deserve it, he said that sometimes the identity of individuals is instrumentalized to benefit some people. From that point of view, global, globalization is a threat to the identity of different peoples, and many are ready to use the identity. The solution for Malouf would be to ask all citizens to assume their own identity rather than having to choose. Otherwise, our societies will be damaged. And then Marian Tupi from the Gato Institute said that Europeans understand nationality depending on ethnicity or based on ethnicity, but not on citizenship. So national identities in the European member states have been developing in different ways that cannot be deleted with social engineering. And then being European means to live in Europe. But there's no political difference, it's just a geographical issue. According to Trippi, the identity of individuals does not come from abstract principles like liberty, freedom or fraternity but from cultural, religious, historic, and linguistic ties. In my opinion, we should work so that citizens understand that the only place, the only real place, where all identities come together is the person. If some groups feel the need to um, insist on their um, singularity, that singularity will be done away with because of globalization. So science should help us to build a planet where all citizens can walk together, but that won't be easy. And it won't be easy because just like David Licken said, the US psychologist, those who signed the European treaty were going against the evolution traditions. They tried to build a bubble tower in an integrated social and economic project. He said that Europeans would fail sooner or later. Why? Because social human groups, according to him, develop and consolidate only if they share a culture. The case of the US, the example of America, shows that a degree of diversity can be tolerated, but up to a limit. If he had been allowed, for example, that the immigrants to the different states of the United States get their own mother tongues, the US wouldn't exist now. America wouldn't be a country today. Matt Whitley said the following. Competition and the difficulties to join forces and build a new state gave rise to our current European uh, continent and it prevented Europe to turn into China during the Ming era. This argument can help to those who think that the European Union is a bad project. This British expert says that free trade should be increased in order to increase our well-being with less uh, involvement of politicians and more freedom for individuals. Nowadays, the people are the main element. Leading from above is the wrong strategy if we want to achieve well-being. Our current society is a very complex system that can be better regulated from the bottom. 
we'd be better off if politicians stopped making decisions with obviously the cooperation of media telling us what we have to do and what we shouldn't do. We're moving to the last part of my presentation and I'll try to answer the one million dollar question. What can we do so that citizens add the European identity to their own identities? So I'll give you several answers and they're to be considered as complementary answers. Firstly, we must fight against national stereotypes using scientific tools non-biased tools and cautious deductions. According to Janko Tvetkov, we could build a very interesting map with those um, stereotypes, quite funny. This map is a scientific map and in 2020 Greece will belong to China, the European Union will be made only by the countries in the East except for Turkey, who has obviously always been a candidate. Germany will dominate on the same number of countries they did in 1941. The name will be Merkel Reich, a very scary name. The Mediterranean will be called the German Nudist Sea. Spain will have three regions, the, three, the Vatican country in the centre, the Catalan Empire and the Sleeping Valley, Andalusia the south. The past country will be dominated by Germany. Svetkov says that politicians usually use mm, these national stereotypes. And in my opinion, after some reflection, a lot of reflection, I do think that some research should be made on national differences, but a serious one. That will be crucial in order to promote the European identity. So my forecast on the result of that study it's easy because any comparison between groups will reveal more similarities than differences. This is what we said before, because those differences are differences between individuals, but not between groups. We should remember now that UNESCO mentioned a while ago, something we have forgotten, that prejudice is created in the mind of a person, of each person, and that we should fight against the irrational belief that a nation or our own social group is better or worse than other groups. Often we repeat what other people have said. We use cliches because they're repeated often in some cultural uh, groups. I'll give you some examples that you might know or not. The pigs, the southern countries, are one of the problems in Europe. English-speaking people drink tea and are pretentious. French people are rude and cowards. Um, Germans are Nazis. They drink lots of beer. They have no sense of humor. Irish have a drinking problem and they have lots of children. Italians are gangsters and they live uh, Dolce Vita. And Italians are toreros for a while before they go and sleep a long, long siesta. It's obviously silly to insist how stupid these um, cliches are and how harmful they are. But our brains are used to these group descriptions and it's going to be difficult to do away with them, but we must. And then the third and last measure that I'm going to mention will contribute to that goal. I know that I repeat myself a lot, but it is important to understand that the unit where we should build identities is the individual, the person. Europe is just one more layer of individual identity. I don't think we should have a general program in order to convince citizens in Europe that they must accept the European identity. What I'm trying to say here is that we should teach citizens and tell them that their individual identity is their own identity and they can therefore decide to incorporate the European identity to his or her own identity in order to share an integrated project. Judy Harris, the famous New Jersey grandmother, and she's been called that in different ways, she can help us in this teaching process 
according to her. People manage the interpersonal relationships. They socialize and they try to be better than their enemies. It's important to know who you want to be friends with, who you want to negotiate with, and who, want, who you want to mate with. And you need to evaluate people. So you need to consider each person individually. Jose Antonio has his own entry in my mind, and that entry is different to that of Patricia or Teresa. Secondly, if we socialize, we must accept somebody's culture. And finally, if we want to succeed when we're grown-ups, we need to have a long-term strategy, trying to hide our defects and trying to promote our virtues. We need in the socialization system to combine data and to um, end up with averages, average information like French people are this way, women are that way, and so on. Succeeding in negotiating and in friendship are two different processes. And what happens in our childhood will influence on what happens when we're grown-ups. These three systems I've mentioned are very interlinked in our brains and we cannot ignore them because they're very important in order to build our own identity. The people that we relate to, the groups that we join, and our position within those groups defines our personality, our identity. Those three systems exist because they contribute to living in a society and they are responsible for the fact that some of the members of each society are unique. All members are unique. And politicians shouldn't ignore this, which is completely linked to the psychology of citizens. You cannot rule a country without understanding individual identity. Or rather than that, it is, of course, possible, but it shouldn't be done if you want to improve your society. By way of conclusion, I would like to make a comparison. We must start working in order to pave again the bridges that we have been building for years in Europe to renovate those buildings, those bridges rather. And little by little we cross those bridges and find them more and more uncomfortable. But if it's still worth crossing those bridges, we need to find the best tools, evidence-based tools, in order to renovate those bridges. Europe will have to understand its identity as adding all European identities and European citizens must be able to feel fully European without being German, French or Spanish. I agree with Malouf. He said building the new Europe is building a new understanding of identity. Thank you.